For this lesson, we'll be going over superposition theorem. Superposition is the analysis of a linear circuit element in a network with multiple independent sources. The calculated response is obtained if each source is considered individually and the results are summed. If you look at the illustrations below, we have two different sources, a voltage source and a current source going to a single resistor. And then one at a time, we are measuring each source as shown below. And it's a very crude matter, but it's very simple how it's done. And we'll go over those later in the examples. In a sense, the overall goal of superposition is to break down a complex circuit one source at a time to calculate a variable for a single element. The illustration below displays a complex circuit, and we're trying to find the total current flowing between points A and B. So all we're doing is adding every single current that's going through that one leg by calculating one source at a time. And again, we'll go through this in more detail in the examples. Superposition consists of four simple steps. Step one, choose the first source to be measured. Again, we're doing one source at a time. Next, you're going to short the voltage sources not being measured and open the current sources not being measured. This is very similar to Thevenin theorem and Norton theorem. Next, you're going to store the sources for that circuit and repeat steps one and two until all sources have been measured. Then you're going to sum the voltage or current values to, to the desired component terminals of interest. There are a few areas of caution when using superposition theorem. One, superposition cannot be used to find power in a DC circuit. It would be ideal to find the total current and then calculate power based on those variables. Second, it's always best to write down or log the current directions and voltage polarities. It's very easy to throw off your calculations when you have the wrong current going the wrong direction and the same thing with voltage polarities. So always write them down. For our first example here, we're gonna start with a relatively easy one. This one's only gonna contain one voltage source, one current source, and one resistor. We're only doing this to go over the steps and get our feet wet. So let's try to find the total current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. We're going to start off something very easy. Step one, choose the source to be measured. Well, for the first one, I'm going to go ahead and choose the 10 volt power supply here. That's the first one I want to measure. So let me go ahead and copy our circuit. Then it's step two states, short the voltage sources and open the current sources that are not being measured. So since I'm using the 10 volt power supply for measurements, this is the one I'm going to leave alone. So that means I have to open the current source. So let me go ahead and remove our current source. Now, let's go ahead and find the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. So current will flow in this direction, and we'll use simple ohms law for this one. It's going to be 10 volts over 5 ohms. That's going to give us 2 amps. So for the first source, we have 2 amps going downward of the 5 ohm resistor fairly simple. All right. Step three, restore the circuit and repeat the steps. So let me go ahead and restore the circuit back. We're going to do the same thing again. Choose the source to be measured. Well, now that I did the voltage source, let's do the current source now. So step two, short the voltage sources, open the current sources. So let's go ahead and add a short right here. And I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and get rid of that. Now we have a better visual right here for our voltage source being shorted. A common pitfall is an individual might believe, well, current's gonna flow this direction with five amps. That's not correct at all. If you go back to the fundamentals of what you learned in all your early electronics classes, current flows in the path of least resistance. So since there's a short right here, five amps is gonna flow through the short back into its own supply. It's not even gonna go flow through this five ohm resistor at all. So there's gonna be zero amps flowing through this 5 ohm resistor just because it's going through the short. Again, this is a very easy one. This is not going to be difficult. So for our next one, we have zero amps. All right. Then it says for step four, sum all the measurements. Well, again, pretty simple. So this is going to be I total equals two amps plus zero amps, giving us a grand total of, obviously, two amps. That's going to be our final answer for the amount of current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. This example is going to be a little bit more trickier. However, if we're able to accomplish this one, we can pretty much do them all. And we're going to follow the exact same steps that we did in the previous problem. It's just now we have more sources to deal with and more resistors. For this exercise, let's see if we can find current flowing through this resistor right here, this 200 ohm resistor, which will say I unknown.
So we're going to copy our circuit. So the first thing I want to do is says choose the source to be measured first. All right. I'm going to start with the two amp current source all the way to the left here. So we're going to apply rule two to the other two sources, which is short our voltage sources and open our current sources. So let's get rid of the three amp current source. And we're going to short our five volt power supply. So we have a short right there. So we need to calculate current flowing through this resistor. Now this can be found in a few ways. I'm going to go ahead and do it the long and tedious way by using simple ohms law. So I see three resistors in parallel. I have a 200 ohm resistor, another 200, and a 100. Our total equals 200 ohms in parallel with another 200 ohm resistor, and then in parallel with another 100 ohm resistor, which when you plug and chug this in your calculator, it's going to give you our total of 50 ohms. Okay? So, in a sense, you're creating a circuit that looks like that. That's 50 ohms. That's 2 amps. So if we use Ohm Law and find the voltage for this circuit, it's going to be 2 amps times 50 ohms gives you 100 volts. If we want to find the current flowing through this 200 ohm resistor, well if there's 100 volts right here, 100 over 200 ohms gives us 100 volts over 200 ohms gives us a grand total of 0.5 amps, and it's flowing downward. Just because you got to pay attention to the current direction of your uh, current source. Okay, so right then there, right off the bat, we're able to find our first current for our first source. All right. Step three: restore the circuit and repeat the steps. So let me go and clean this up. All right, restore our circuit. Now we need to choose another source to be measured. Well, since I already did the two amps, let's do the three amps next. So we're going to short our voltage sources and open our current sources. So let's delete that. And we'll short that. So I'm going to short right there. All right, we're going to do the same thing again. And looking at this, well, current's not flowing through that leg, so that's just as easy. We have the same thing as last time. We have three resistors in parallel, and then a current source. So, well, we know from last time, the total resistance was 50 ohms. And now we have a current of three amps. So, using Ohm's law again, so we have three amps times 50 ohms gives us 150 volts. So between here and here, we have 150 volts. And again, we know current direction, it's flowing downward. Just because looking at the current source here, it can only flow one direction, goes in this leg and out these legs. Let's use Ohm's law to find our next current. It's gonna be 150 volts over 200 ohms equals 0.75 amps. And same thing as last time, it's going downward. Step three, restore the circuit, repeat steps. Okay, let's do it again. I have my circuit here. One, choose the source to be measured. So we did our current sources. Let's we'll save the best for last, which is our voltage source. And then short the voltage sources and open the current sources. So I'm going to cheat on that one. That was easy. And then we're going to do our calculation, same as last time. Now instead of the 100 ohm resistor and the 200 ohm resistors being in parallel, looks like I have just the 200 ohm resistors in parallel and then the 100 ohm resistor in series. So, well, this is pretty simple while even doing our calculator. 200 ohms in parallel equals 100 ohm resistance total. And then you have a 100 ohm resistor in series, so that's going to be plus 100 ohms. I seem to chop the heads off my zeros a lot. So that gives us a grand total of 200 ohms of resistance with 5 volts. We have the total resistance. We should be able to find the total current, so it's going to be Five amp, uh, so it's going to be 5 volts over 200 ohms equals 25 milliamps. So we're going to have 25 milliamps going through our circuit. 
Again, mind the polarities of your volt source, that way you know what direction current is flowing. All right. We have 25 milliamps going between two 200 ohm resistors. Well, it's pretty simple. Since they're the same, it's going to split the 25 milliamps. So, so to find current flowing through one of these 200 ohm resistors, we must divide 25 milliamps by two. So that's going to be, come out to be an answer of 12.5 milliamps. For our last source, our voltage source, it's 25 milliamps divided by two gives us 12.5 milliamps going downward. And again, mind the polarities of the voltage source. All right, we did all of our sources for this circuit. So now we need to sum all the measurements up. So our total current is going to be 0.5 amps plus 0.75 amps plus 12.5 milliamps. And we can always plug and chug this in our calculator to be safe. Gives us our answer of 1.263 amps. Our final answer.